This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. We have a whole wave of these bishops now starting to resign, not for any what we would call like Bergolian reason, right? We're not having resignations coming down from Rome, from pressure from Rome, because bishops had to the bad habit of defending Catholicism and promoting the traditional faith. In this case, or in these cases we'll talk about today, these are bishops with a lot of finger pointing at them. More accusations of a Ted McCarrick kind of problem involving these bishops. Either they themselves were engaged in such activities or they helped sweep these problems under the rug. This, these are interesting stories all involving secular authorities, and I tend to want to, these days, give bishops, any members of the clergy, at least the opportunity to have their day in court and have their, go through the process before simply saying, yes, they did whatever it is the secular authorities have said they did, not because I necessarily think this problem should be downplayed, but because, quite frankly, I don't trust the secular authorities to be truthful. As I said in my reporting on this yesterday, Cardinal Pell looms large over all of this. And while these cases are not from Australia, you're going to see these cases today involve secular governments that tend to have too heavy a hand in the Catholic Church in their countries. Owning property, being involved in, the, in some way in their employment. I mean, this is strange stuff the way these governments work here in their relationship with the Church. And their involvement does give me pause, but I think some of these are a little more cut and dry than maybe the previous one. So let's go right to this first story. So headline from katholisch.de, the official news arm of the German bishops. Archbishop resigns after Ted McCarrick case in his diocese. The story isn't like the necessarily like the one in Australia where I'm more inclined to, despite what some things I've heard from listeners in Australia, where I'm more inclined to at least make sure this priest, this bishop has his day in the system dealing with things before actually, you know, necessarily saying, yeah, he did it. It's because, well, again, in Australia, I don't trust the system because of Cardinal Pell and what they did to him down there. But this is different. This is Poland, where the hostility hasn't been there for uh, between the church and and the state there. They, had the, they haven't had that track record in recent decades. Maybe right now, with a new government in Poland, things are after their elections, things are a little dicier. But this isn't stemming from that. This is would have been in the, uh, in the pipe, the legal pipeline, for quite a while before that. So let's go to the story and take a look at it. So from Katolish, it's very short. It goes, quote, After much criticism surrounding a case of Ted McCarrick kind of things in his archdiocese, Andreas de Ziga has resigned as Archbishop of Stettin Common. Pope Francis accepted his resignation, the Vatican Press Office announced on Saturday. No reasons were given in the communique. At 71, the bishop has not yet reached the usual age limit for the Episcopal resignations of 75. From the, age of tw from the end of 2020, allegations of sweeping o aside uh, problems against bishops in Poland made headlines. The churchmen are said to have kept... Ted McCarrick problems evolving very young by clergy under cover. The case of a priest from the Western Polish Archdiocese of Stettin Common in particular caused outrage. He is said to have done uh, redacted back in the early 1990s. According to the accusation, the church had known about it since 1995, but had taken no action against him. The priest uh, passed at the beginning of 2021 after dealing with a uh, withering away ailment. And uh, somewhat, quote, this pre this are the bishop here is said to have swept this on participated in sweeping this under the rug now a couple questions emerge from this of course one being that this news is coming out in 2024 involving things that happened 35 years ago and that the or 30 years ago 1995 that's when by then it was confirmed that the diocese knew about it one wonders why this took this long to happen and 30 years ago by the way that the, the, the bishop there was probably just another priest. So again, why now? No details are emerging from this. So again, very curious why now. 
But again, there always is, has to be somebody who takes the blame for the past misdeeds of long since retired bishops, which is almost certainly the case there in Poland. But you begin to see how widespread this problem of the Ted McCarrick kind of issue was in the hierarchy back in the 1990s in Poland. How did this happen? There are people like Bella Dodd in most places in the Western world, and even not so much the Western world like Poland, who are putting men morally unfit into the priesthood with the idea of bringing the church down. And now we, are, we, are, we have been reaping the whirlwind of that diabolical work for decades. Bella Dodd was doing this stuff in the 1930s. By the 1950s, when she went public with it, she said there were some of, her, some of the seminarians she placed in had become bishops and cardinals already in the 1950s. You want to read about what she her about her testimony? She wrote the book School of Darkness. You can go read that; it's easily available. Catholic publishers still publish that book. But she was working in America. She wasn't the only one. She she wasn't working alone. She was part of a much larger attempt to bring the church down with this stuff. And so you have the fruits of this work in Poland. There, it's not just Poland either. This pairs today with the other with this other story that comes from the Pillar, where a bishop resigned for mysterious reasons. Even the Pillar, which is a moderate outlet, isn't buying the official story here. So from the Pillar headline, amid scandal, Strasbourg auxiliary bishop resigns for quote unquote health reasons. Note the quotes around the word health reasons. Virtually no one is buying that as an excuse for the bishop to step down from his post. Clearly something else is going on here. And again, you're going to see a common pattern emerging here, either the sweeping aside of these issues themselves or them being said to have participated and done these things themselves. Again, it could very well be that the case of that bishop in Australia that I reported on yesterday did what they said he did. Could very well be the case. And it could be the same case here. In fact, in this case, it almost looks like this bishop's trying to evade having to deal with things. Now, this is in France, and this is where you start getting into the weird relationship with government. Because I personally find it distasteful if they're going to, if the, if the French state has authority, legal authority over bishops to the point where a French government official has to accept the resignation of a bishop for it to actually be a valid resignation, that the church takes all the blame for this problem. Because obviously that means there's some sort of oversight of the church going on in France. It has been since at least 1904, I think it was, when the French government seized church property. So this is an interesting story, and one wonders if the French government's going to take any of sort of the responsibility on this since they apparently have oversight of bishops and clergy in France. From the article, quote, Pope Francis accepted the resignation Wednesday of a 51-year-old French auxiliary bishop. And while the local church has insisted Bishop Giles Rettinger resigned for, quote, health reasons, the bishop was also engulfed by a scandal surrounding the Paris Foreign Mission Society. The Holy See Press Office announced February 14th, Ash Wednesday, that the Pope had accepted the resignation of Bishop Rettinger from the Office of Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Strasbourg. It did not offer an explanation for the step. The Strasbourg Archdiocese, which traces its roots to the 4th century, has a distinctive status thanks to the Concordat of 1801, according to which Episcopal moves are jointly approved by the Vatican and the French president. The French state therefore also announced Wednesday that the president had agreed to Rettinger's resignation. It did not provide an explanation for the resignation. Archbishop Philippe Bellot, the Bishop of Metz and the Apostolic Administrator of Strasbourg Archdiocese since May 2023, suggested in a February 14th statement that Rettinger was stepping aside for health reasons. He said, quote, As soon as I arrived as Apostolic Administrator for the Archdiocese of Strasbourg, Bishop Giles Rettinger informed me of the health problems he had been experiencing for some time. This situation prevented him from fully exercising his Episcopal ministry. In these circumstances, he decided to present his resignation to the Holy Father, who accepted it. Within the concordant framework, the public authorities were duly notified, it, he added. In concrete terms, Bishop Rettinger will no longer exercise the functions of Auxiliary Bishop as of today. He will become Auxiliary Bishop Emeritus of Strasbourg, still titular of St. Papoul. The end of the necessary time, he will be able to consider resuming some pastoral activities. I invite you to respect his rest and avoid any requests. Even though his name will no longer be mentioned in the Eucharistic prayer, I call on all members of the diocese to continue praying for him and with him. But despite the circumspection from the church and state officials on the reasons for Rettinger's departure from office, his resignation is the latest twist in a string of events and scandals. So you might be asking, what are these 
the string of events and scandals here. Well, as it turns out, the, this auxiliary bishop was kind of important to an investigating Ted McCarrick problems against certain mission groups in France, and the bishop apparently, that's what they're saying he did, were failed to report problems to the secular authorities as part of French law, which exercises a lot of control over the, at least that diocese of, in the, of the Catholic Church in France. And that this whole concordant stuff seems bizarre to outsiders looking into it. But if you remember, it's the year 1801, and this is about the time Napoleon came to power in France, and so this was the time when the church started being regaining at least some of its rights it had before uh, Robespierre and that whole mess. But the secular authorities investigated these allegations, which the bishop vociferously denied, saying that he reported anything he found to the apostolic nuncio, who apparently whose job it was to then let the French state know what was going on. One wonders why he didn't tell his the archbishop, who then would tell his contact in the French president's office. But again, it could be that it's the job of the apostolic nuncio to France. But it appears, again, they're saying he didn't report this to the authorities. So it sounds like he should be, it, the procedurally, there should be a process for him to directly say the, tell these things to the authorities himself. Now, since then, since this mess started happening for him, Numerous missionaries themselves have come forward saying they told this bishop in particular about problems that they had found involving McCarrick kind of stuff, but that he did nothing about the problem priests he was told about. His response is that he did his job and passed the information on to his superiors. Now he's resigning for quote-unquote health reasons, despite having been at the center of a nasty set of these kinds of scandals himself. And the question, of course, is, will he be back? I mean, he's only 51 years old. That's awfully young for a bishop to retire. An auxiliary bishop at 51 has enough years ahead of him that he could still actually become, if he's a, if he's the kind of go-getter that the Vatican likes, he could actually become an archbishop or even a cardinal archbishop. He is that young. But with this kind of baggage hanging around him, I doubt it. But you never know. It, it, it could legitimately be health reasons, but the timing of this is so suspect that nobody apparently in France believes that, and nobody even at the pillar believes that. And I have to emphasize that Pillar Catholic is a very restrained outlet. They try to be actual to engage in actual journalism over there, and without a lot of their own personal commentary. But even they couldn't help but but note that these resignations are fishy. So now we have in two days three bishops resigning. Possibly all three of them guilty of either aiding those in committing heinous deeds against the most vulnerable or themselves doing it. How much more of this do you think is going to come to light this year? What do you think the consequences of that will be when this stuff starts to hit the news? Let me know in the comments, please, and please pray for all the bishops I've talked about here today and yesterday. They need your prayers, whether it's for an interior conversion or that they that their names be cleared, whatever the truth is, they need prayers so that the truth may emerge. But let me know what you thought on this in the comments, please, and like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, so to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.